We'd like to welcome you back to part two of our current event and weekly Bible study for January 1st, 2018, the first day of 2018. And uh, the next report here is entitled, Soon AI to Create Indistinguishable False Reality. Humanity soon won't be able to distinguish reality from simulation. And this is really disturbing stuff here. Uh, here we're looking at a... Uh, an image of a winter, a car, uh, like basically a view from a car, like it looks like a dash cam view, okay, of uh, like a car driving down a road, uh, there's a couple cars on the road and it's snowing. And then there's an image of, and this is AI generated. It's the same image, but it's summer. It's a summer image that it's creating. It's generating. It's creating it from the one image in the winter. It's literally putting leaves on the trees. I mean, you can't tell it's not a summer image. You can't tell. And this is where we're moving with this stuff. Artificial intelligence can soon create a false reality indistinguishable from the real one suggests new advancements in graphics manipulation which serves as a warning to humanity graphics firm navita recently released results of its image to image translation which can take an outdoor photo taken in the winter and transform it into the same scene but in the summer with indistinguishable results um again just a couple bible verses matthew 24 24 for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. This is going to be part, I really believe, of that great signs and wonders. It's not going to be the only part, but it's going to be a big part. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And the very elect they'll, they'll deceive are going to be the ones that are not educated on these subjects. Okay, They're ignorant of Satan's devices so now he's getting an advantage of them they're being destroyed for lack of knowledge so this is this is like basically the um one of the greatest uh, distinguishing signs of the end times is that they're going to show great signs and wonders okay and these are the false christ and the false prophets also the antichrist and the false prophet are going to all operate that way as well they're going to deceive the whole world through their miracles, through their sorceries, through their lying signs and wonders. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So we really need to be guarding ourselves. Jesus Christ said regarding this end time is be not deceived. Because that is going to be the main thing that you're going to have to guard against. God is sending the strong delusion according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in regard to this time when that wicked, capital W, meaning the Antichrist, is going to be revealed. So we really need to be on guard against this stuff. Uh, Mark 13, 22, for, for false Christ and false prophets shall arise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. So again, it's another reason to guard against pride because you, you don't ever want to get to the point where you think, well, I'm so holy that I can never be deceived. You know, don't ever go there, <laughs> please. So here we're looking at more images of... Um, these uh input of a summit sunny image and then it's the ai generated rainy image they, they can literally take a an image from when it's sunny during the summer and then turn that same image where it looks like i mean it looks like it just rained about five inches part of the road's flooded part of it's not i mean it's it's crazy what they can do Going back to this report, it says, we present high-quality image translation results on various challenging unsupervised image translation tasks, including street sign image translation, animal image translation, and face image translation, Navita revealed. The ramifications of this technology are enormous. The pol politically persecuted could soon be victims of fabricated video evidence presented by the mainstream media as undeniable proof of wrongdoing which will be accepted without question by the general public, which takes everything at face value. I, again, I think this is why, for me personally, what, what are some of our weapons against this? Well, obviously, staying right with God, confessing your sins, putting on the full armor of God every day. And then also, 
I've, I've been a big advocate of, of imprecatory prayers, and particularly Psalm 64. Just key in Psalm 64 in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com because you're asking God to hide you from the secret counsel of the wicked and from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. And then you're also asking God to judge the wicked because when God judges the wicked, good things always happen. God can, God's bigger than all this is the whole point. So I don't want to present like this like oh there's no hope ai is going to overtake us we're all going to die and we're all going to be sucked in the matrix or whatever no I'm, I'm not here to present that god is god's technology cannot even be compared with, with god's power cannot be compared with anything i'm going over today this is all one of the things where god would just like look at this and laugh you know so understand that god is bigger than all of this and god is still capable more than capable of hiding christians protecting christians of shielding them from this but i think it's also important that you pray specifically about this because if you're just totally unaware and there's no prayer going up regarding any of this stuff well you know that's not a good thing so if you want to know more about that key in psalm 64 or the keyword search box contendingfortruth.com that i mean that by itself, that whole concept of imprecatory prayers can absolutely change your life for the better. I mean, I know it did me. And I know it has a lot of other people as well. So, okay, let's go further here. Um, it's basic human physiology. People desire comfort in a universe wrapped by mystery. And they achieve it by instinctively accepting what's in front of them. To question too much would bewilder them. And why would they question an AI-generated deception that cannot be deciphered from reality? In short, the mirroring of reality presents endless pathways of deception to the elites. Absolutely. Just one more tool of Satan, as I was saying. One more really big, gigantic tool. People lose the ability to distinguish between reality and fantasy. Gene uh, Bullard wrote in his book, Sim Simulucra and Simulation. They also begin to engage with fantasy without realizing what it really is. Humanity is heading toward hyper-reality, the point where consciousness is unable to distinguish what we know as reality from mere simulation. And here we have a picture of Zuckerberg, um, the Facebook dude, the guy that started Facebook, uh, the devil incarnate. And it's called Zuckerberg's Cave, where you see all of these people with these... Um, virtual reality full like it goes all the way around or all, all the way in your where your eyes are okay and they're literally a whole room of people in virtual reality and he's just walking by them all he doesn't have the glasses on and all these people are basically plugged into the matrix okay and he's he's smiling and it's ironically fitting that the power elites who've nearly exhausted all the methods of control they've used on the population for thousands of years would come full circle by creating Plato's cave to imprison humanity in a false realm which they control. And again, ultimately, where they would really want to get us is really literally in this virtual reality type of, of scenario where we're literally just this passive um, uh, group of humanity that is literally plugged in and locked into the matrix all while Satan is just advancing his agenda, you know, by leaps and bounds every day because humanity is doing nothing to fight that agenda. This is where they want to bring us. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 11, 16 through 18 says, Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. And he shut up heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul. So what it's saying is that your heart be not deceived. And again, that's the biggest thing we have to guard against, particularly in the time of day, day and time and age where we're in and going into and that you turn aside and serve other gods see your heart can be deceived and you're turning aside and serving other gods and worshiping them and you're not even knowing you're doing it and this ai is one of the perfect ways to implement that uh first corinthians 14 33 for god is not the author of confusion and this is confusion let's face it but of peace 
as in all the churches of the saints. Next video is entitled, They're Teaching Us to Worship the AI Electric Gods. Hey guys, this is KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. So I just stumbled across... Again, I'm not endorsing everything that this guy puts out, but I, from what he's going to say here, I think he brings up a lot of good points. And this, we're going to look at another aspect of this whole AI um, technology. Across this story recently, it just came out a few days ago, brain implants to change moods controlled by AI begin human tests. What does this mean for humanity? We're literally watching an evolution take place. This is a man-made evolution. Many people have covered this subject online for many years now. Transhumanism. This I have no idea what the pregnant pauses are about. But there's a lot of them. It's kind of maddening, but um, just bear that in mind. Singularity. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the most important stories I've seen in a very long time. What I believe we're seeing here is beast system technology that correlates with the Bible itself. Revelation specifically. We're told that people are going to have to accept a mark to buy, sell, or trade, or to be a part of this new society. One of the marks is going to be on the hand, and the other one, they say, is in the forehead. Not on the forehead, but in the forehead. So now brain implants makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? I, I don't really uh, totally agree. I mean, it's going to be... In the fort, it's going to be under the skin. It's going to be in the hand. The, 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 um, <clears throat> the King James Bible is one of the only versions that actually makes that distinction. A lot of the other versions say it's on. Meaning it's just like it's going to be some sticker they put on you or whatever. <clears throat> and no, it's, it's going to most likely be a mark coupled with some type of microchip input. It's going to be probably dual. I, I've done a lot of teachings on this. They're a little bit dated, but just key in mark beast at the contending for truth.com um I, i'd say that I'll, most of what i've covered there is just as pertinent today uh as far as yes is it going to be able to, is the mark going to be able to affect us from a neuro neurological standpoint absolutely 100 percent. but what we're talking about here is when you're talking about a neural implant literally on the brain i don't think the mark of the beast is going to be that because you can get it in your right hand as well well, you know if they put it in your right hand, it's not going to be on the brain, in the brain, okay? It's going to be under the skin, though, and that's all it's going to need. <laughs> it's not going to need to be right, literally resting on or in the brain in order to do its work. It's, it's going to be all you need is, is just as long as it's in the body. A chip put on your brain in the forehead. I believe this is an example of the mark. You got you to gotta go through the skull to get to the brain. Okay, so it's, that's, that's a big difference. The beast. So here's the other piece to the puzzle when we're talking about the mark of the beast. You may remember this story. I covered it several years ago. Many other people covered it as well, and they needed to because this is a very big deal. Electronic tattoos and passwords you can swallow. And again, you're ingesting the chip. You're ingesting this beast technology. But the other side of this is that she's talking about these tattoos. It's a tattoo that'll go over your skin on the back of your hand. That may be part of the mark of the beast, but it is not, and I, I believe there's a very good likelihood that may be something like a hexagram, which is a 666. It's not this wonderful sign that, you know, is on the Israeli flag. It's very, very wicked and evil. And I'm not condemning the, the Jewish race, but if you want to know more about that, key in hexagram, 
at contendingfortruth.com and I'll give you irrefutable proof with pictures in the PDF that that is one of the most wicked high-level signs in all of witchcraft. And that could be incorporated into some type of tattoo that the mark of the beast... Remember, it's going to be a mark too. There's going to be something that you be able to physically identify a person on the right hand or on their forehead, most likely in conjunction with some type of microchip type of implant as well. Because if it was just a mark, how are you going to buy, sell, or trade with just a mark? There's got to be some te technological component, and there's, we know there's a component that is going to be able to control us neurologically and from a brain standpoint because you won't be able to get saved anymore. You know, there's got to be something going on there where your conscience is seared with a hot iron where you can't get saved anymore. So it's just logical things when you start thinking about it. And it will work in unison with these pills that you swallow. So you as a human being will literally be connected to the internet. Now here's another story from 2013 that correlates with the story we were just looking at. Again, it's Google. Google is patenting an electronic throat tattoo. So this is just another example of how they're merging humanity with machines. They're merging humanity with technology. And what you're looking at right here are some actual images of technology that we can swallow as human beings. That's some really crazy stuff if you think about it. Just look how small these chips are. So here's another really interesting story. This one just came out about a week ago or so. I remember when they were planning this over a year ago, and I covered it back then. And once again, other people covered this as well. But it turns out the first human head transplant successfully performed on a corpse. And why does this matter? Well, it should matter to you. Once again, this is a clear example of how they're merging humanity with machines, humanity with technology. Because if you read these articles, you'll see that one of the possibilities in the future is taking a human head and transplanting it onto a robot body. Oh, I know this is crazy stuff. We've seen this in movies and TV shows for years, but that's all a part of that conditioning, the predictive programming. No, that wouldn't be too creepy. I mean, you know, no, no red flags there at all. The social engineering. So here's a great example of this, once again, of the preconditioning, the predictive programming, all the social engineering that's been coming to us about this really dark future that the elite or those on top of the pyramid uh, have in store for humanity. Killer robots in film and pictures. So this is from Metropolis, 1927. I did a video on this a while back called The First Illuminati Movie because it literally shows the convergence of science and technology. Remember, this is from 1927. It's not only a convergence of science and technology, but also Satanism. So they mix all three together, and you actually get the film Metropolis. And from what I've shown you so far already, you can see that combination once again. Of I mean, it, I've seen this clips of this movie. 1927. Okay. This is, you know, one of the first, you know, movies ever made, pretty much. And... In Fritz Lang's German Expressionist sci-fi epic, I mean, a sci-fi movie from 1927? A robot is created as the double of its film's heroine, Maria. The robot spurs the inhabitants of the city to murder and destruction. And isn't that kind of what we keep seeing with this AI? She keeps saying, I'm just going to kill all of you, and I'm going to take over humanity and destroy you all and kill you all. <laughs> but, you know, I just, you know, just look the other way. I'm just kidding. I'm just messing around with you. And here we have an inverted pentagram behind this is a scene from the movie i mean it's literally an inverted pentagram in the sign of baphomet or the goat of mendez um where and then we have this robot in front of i mean it's it's pretty much as satanic as you can get science technology and something satanic all of this stuff leading towards things we've seen in the bible and revelation about the mark of the beast so the mark of the beast will be something created through science, technology, and Satanism. Dark forces. 
2001 A Space Odyssey from 1968. HAL 9000 controls the spacecraft Discovery 1, which is bound for Jupiter. The crew suspect HAL of making a mistake and secretly talk about this connection. HAL is the onboard computer for this. So now we, we go forward to 1968 where they're projecting what it's going to be like in 2001 Space Odyssey. HAL lip reads their conversation and then kills most of the crew. <laughs> Again, predictive programming here. Uh, Kabbalistic principle of the Illuminati telling you ahead of time what they're going to be doing to you in the future. Pretty much. Westworld 1973. And also there's a, a new show, Westworld, on HBO. I tried to watch some clips from that, but I like I had to turn it off. It was like bad, bad, not good stuff. <laughs> From just like the one episode I tried to like just... Because I had people telling me about this Westworld. And I'm like, whoa, no, 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 no. There's way too much inappropriate stuff in this show. But I didn't realize that there was a movie called Westworld from 1973. Which evidently this new HBO thing spawned from. And we got a vacation for you in Michael Crichton's future amusement park, The Robots Melt. So again, we, we got to be you know, careful about what we're watching. You know, the Bible says I will set no wicked thing before my eyes, these types of things. And so we got to be super careful on that as well. Function, Yul Brenner's gunslinger is the coldest human killer of all. He's a robot. The Stepford Wives, 1975. If you are an independently minded female and move to Connecticut suburb of Stepford, beware, you will be murdered by your robot devil. All about robots, AI murdering people, basically. Logan's Run, 1976. In 2274, when you hit 30 years of age, you were vaporized. Michael York and Jenny Agutter take umbrage. I don't know if you, and you've seen this show, but I remember watching it when I was a little kid and how creepy it was to me. The whole concept of when you turn 30, you were basically suspended in this big... I don't know, auditorium where you're up in like the, the uh, you're suspended up there in front of all these people and then all these people were basically taking shots at you, I think with like lasers and stuff, until you're all killed off. That way they had nobody that was old in their society and this is the way that they controlled the, um, the population and that they were able to kill off anybody that they were seeing as, okay, well, they're, they're, they're over the hill now, evidently. They're past the age of 30 so we're, we're going to kill them off before they ever get there. Uh, it, was, it was a horrible um, concept. And become fugitives known as runners. They come across the robot box in an ice cave. He likes to capture and freeze runners for all eternity. Demon Seed, 1977. Computer Proteus has artificial intelligence. Proteus wants to procreate with Julie Christie's Susan. It threatens to kill a child. She complies, and let's just say it doesn't end well. Alien, 1979. Ian Holm played science officer Ash in Ridley Scott's movie. He wasn't helping the crew of the Nostromo. He was, in fact, a Hyperdyne Systems android intent only on bringing back an alien alive even if the crew had to die. Well, one example after another of wicked, evil AI robots that could care less about humanity and basically their whole goal was literally to destroy humanity. Blade Runner, 1982. Replicants, Tyrell Corporation, Nexus 6, Synthetic Humanoids, only have a four-year lifespan. A gang led by Rutger Hauer's Roy Batty return to Earth looking for answers. Here, Batty confronts his, quote, maker, Dr. Eldon Tyrell, prior to killing him in a powerful scene. <laughs> Again, he kills him. The Terminator, 1984. Man creates artificial defense computer Skynet. Skynet self-develops and thinks autonomously. Skynet creates Terminators. Terminators kill humans. We have been warned. Big, gigantic blockbuster movie, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then it was like Terminator 
two and three or whatever. I don't even know how many of them there were. But I mean, Hollywood has devoted a lot of um, millions and billions of dollars to promoting this concept, just like the, the alien concept as well. This is another concept they have um, <clears throat> devoted a ton of time and energy and monies toward. Hardware, 1990, based on a short story from 2000 AD, once again about killer cyborgs. The Matrix Reloaded 2003, the Sentinels that feature throughout the trilogy are autonomous killing machines that patrol the ancient sewers of the dead human cities. So here's another news story that applies with this merging of machines and humanity. Stop the rise of the killer robots, warn human rights advocates. The title alone is insane to me. I never would have thought we'd be seeing something like this in our lifetime. I mean, many years ago before I was ever woke up to this kind of stuff, it just never would have occurred to me because we see so much of this in movies and TV shows. But once again, it goes back to a subject we cover a lot here on the channel, and it's predictive programming and social engineering. That's why media is such a powerful tool, oftentimes used for very wicked purposes. The part of that is to brainwash humanity, to prepare them for all the different agendas exactly. of the New World Order. In September, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned that the one... I, Robot with Will Smith. I mean, that's another one that, you know... Robots out of control or whatever. Uh, there's so many. He's just, this is a literal sliver of, of just some of the shows that Hollywood has put out in order to get this concept firmly embedded in our brains so that from a Luciferian standpoint, we've been forewarned. Who becomes the leader in this sphere will be the ruler of the world, referring to artificial intelligence in general in the same speech Putin also appeared to suggest that the future wars would consist of battles between autonomous drones, but then reassured his audience that Russia would naturally share such technology if it were to develop it first. So then you have this story. This is insane. This artificial intelligence creates photorealistic faces of people who don't exist. So check this out. These are not actual people. These images were created by artificial intelligence. I mean, they're showing two really realistic-looking photos of two people that do not exist. They would, you would think of them along the lines of, like, movie stars or something. They don't exist. Remember what I just said about how they can take these pictures? The AI has the capability. And again, this is they're just what they're admitting to. Who knows what they can really do? Where they can take, you know, a summer day where it's sunny and then take it the exact thing and either make it look like it's winter or make it look like it's raining on that day or whatever with the exact same road, the exact same cars or whatever. Here we're seeing images of people, they can do this with animals, that they don't even exist. You know? That's some pretty shocking stuff. I mean, once again, just seeing this, can you imagine what else they can create? And how much of we see on the media is actually real or fabricated. It's true. Who knows? I mean, I've seen crazy stuff where they've had um, famous people where you can go and you can basically talk and then the famous person is saying like the words that you're saying in their own voice with their own inflections, with their own facial expressions. I've seen that technology. I mean, again, this is just so much bigger than anything that a Christian could possibly handle from any type of, okay, let's, you know, gear up and man up and bow up. and No, God has to be the one that guides you, leads you, directs you, and protects you regarding all of this. And this is why, again, I go back to, you know... <laughs> Template for prayer, Lord's Prayer. I'm not saying, you know, wrote prayers or whatever. But I mean, template for prayer, Jesus said, when you pray. You know, these are concepts, in other words. Full armor of God every day. Um, you know, making sure right with God. Confess, confessing your sins. Staying in the word of God. Uh, uh, and then something like Psalm 64. Whatever Psalm, you know, you, you gravitate towards. Some people really like Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is awesome. There's a lot of Psalms out there. 
but of an imprecatory nature, uh, nature, and then also where you're asking God to protect you and that you're not being deceived and these types of things. Because, man, I mean, this is so much further than any of us can really comprehend. And this is just a little bit they're admitting to. So who knows how bad it really is, is what I'm saying here. Um, okay, so last report here is ex-Google engineer is making an AI god and people will worship it. And we had, we just touched on this earlier, one of the reports. But Anthony Lewandowski, the former Google and Uber, Uber executive has filed paperwork with the IRS, and I'm, I'm assuming it's like a 501c3 like most churches are, 501c3, you know, type of uh, corporation, to officially register a religion centered around the super smart artificial intelligence, or AI. According to IRS documents, the new Church of AI will aim to, quote, develop and promote the realization of a godhead based on artificial intelligence. And I wonder if they're going to have some kind of fake uh, knockoff trinity. Because it says Godhead. This doesn't say God, it says Godhead. So are they going to like try to reproduce Father, Son, and Holy Ghost with whatever? I don't know. But it says the realization of a Godhead based on artificial intelligence and through the understanding and worship of the Godhead to contribute to the betterment of society. Yeah, spoken like the true fork-tongued devil Satan himself. Lewandowski would be the leader. Oh, wow, isn't that convenient for him? Good, good position for him. In this case, the dean. The dean of the religion. The robot god will, be a, will head a non-profit religious organization called, quote, the Way of the Future, or W-O-T-F. Because they're gonna, that's how they're going to portray this. This is the Way of the Future. According to the, I mean, either either go with it or be assimilated like the Borg on Star Trek, you know. <laughs> According to the website, wayofthefuture.church, and there's a link here, wayofthefuture.church, the, um, you know, www.wayofthefuture.church, the movement is about creating a peaceful and respectful transition of who is in charge of the planet from people to people to plus machines. In other words, from people to, this is the classification, people plus machines, meaning transhumans, transhumans, meaning cyborgs. That's going to be the first step. And then it'll be fully where they're going to, I, I played those videos where a lot of the United Nations goals are to literally, by I think the year 2030 or 2033, to upload our consciousnesses into mainframes, into some type of computing systems where we won't be hindered by a body anymore. Okay, that's the goal here. Again, the goal from Satan's standpoint is just to get you into hell. Okay, that's the whole goal of this movement. And and to make, get as many people as complacent and as asleep and really overwhelmed thinking, what can I do to possibly fight? You can get on your knees. You can pray. You can educate. You can, I mean, again, imprecatory prayers. Full armor of God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongs. That doesn't change just because of all this garbage that I'm talking about. Again, the purpose of this ministry is not to discourage and let's throw up our hands and, and concede defeat and, oh, I, what can I ever... No, 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 no. I'm encouraging you, now that you're educated about this particular subject, to fight. Fight. Praying. Fasting educating others you know all of these different things you can do that's why i'm doing these these broadcasts they're not to discourage um we want to be able we want to know our enemy we want to know his devices we don't want to be destroyed for lack of knowledge and that's the key here so that's that's the niche of this particular uh, ministry okay now um it, it can it, it, <laughs> For people, and I, again, I'm, this isn't to my listeners, but there's the Bible verses that are kind of applicable here. Um, Galatians 1, 6 through 10. And I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And that other gospel was a gospel based in works. And in this particular case, 
they wanted uh, the Galatians were wanting to head back into the bondage of the Jewish Pharisaical Sadducees type of 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 religion. Okay, they wanted to be entangled again in the yoke of bondage, as the Bible talks about in Galatians. Okay, they wanted to go back into that, and um, that was the other gospel. But this is a this is also another gospel that we're talking. This is the gospel of AI. This is this new church that we're literally talking about, the way of the future, uh, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ. And this is beyond a perversion of the gospel of Christ, obviously. This is just beyond that. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So let this Lewandowski guy, this Anthony Lewandowski let him be accursed is what the Bible says. Any other person that would come to you and present any other gospel other than that the Bible preaches, let him be accursed. Okay, that's not unbiblical. The Bible says let it be so because that person doesn't need to be blessed in their wickedness. If that person is blessed in his wickedness, he's just going to take a ton more people to hell with him through his deception. That's the point. Okay, so let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that you have received, let him be accursed. It says it again, reiterates it. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And again, this is a very man-pleasing type of gospel. Oh, the machines are going to do all the work for us, and we're just going to sit back and get plugged into the matrix, and 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 they'll feed us bonbons all day, and 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 do all of our housework and all of our bidding, and run all of our errands for us while we just sit back and become lazy slobs, and and while we're plugged into the matrix, you know. And I mean, all the garbage now going on with these sex bots and stuff, and oh man, I mean, evidently they're just these robot sex dolls oh i haven't even really got into that that much but evidently they're so realistic now and they're getting more realistic by basically probably the month and a lot of people are wanting to like marry these things and 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 they're foreseeing that the whole concept of human relationships is going to go out the window because you're going to be able to have some sex doll that that whether you're a man or a woman but this is mostly appealing to the men because they're more visual creatures by nature um and more if probably more uh overall um well they have a propensity more toward that uh they're literally entering into like this is like my wife this is this is my sex you can program it any way you want you can order it any way you want it doesn't argue with you it doesn't give you a heart i mean they're having sex i mean it's just you can't even comprehend what's going on now there i just saw this thing yesterday too and i had reported on this earlier that the um germany evidently they're having these bestiality brothels where you can go in there and you can have sex with, I'm talking, all kinds of different animals. And it's just so incomprehensible. And they're exploding in Germany, like the, the, they're, because they're le being legalized. I, I tell you, when it comes to a human having, that's something that I can't really hardly dwell on. When it comes to that, bestiality. And stuff like that. I, I can't, I don't even like to report on it. I mean, the Bible talks about having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness and rather reproving them. It's a shame of them to speak of those things done. I mean, it's one of those things where I don't even really want to, but I'm, I'm telling you it's going on and it's something to pray against. I mean, you talk about something that's going to defile the land. You know, child pornography, child snuff films, bestiality. I really believe those are the core things that will defile the land. The Bible talks about homosexuality, sodomy. These are things that literally bring a curse on the land. And I can't even imagine a country that would... I mean, I'm, I shouldn't speak too soon because, you know, the way things are going, I would hope to God that, you know, it doesn't come to America. But can you imagine 
bestiality brothels and they're exploding across uh, Germany? I don't know. They're probably going to be... And you look at how Europe is just going down into the sewer. And I'm not saying America's heading in the right direction. Um, but... It's just... Oh, man, that is so wicked. So sickening. How could anybody want it? Oh, man, I tell you, you got to be so demon-possessed to the toenails. You have to be such a vessel of Satan to even think in those terms. And I'm not saying that because I think I miss Mr. Goody Two-Shoes, but come on, really? Little children or animals or I mean, I mean, talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is a surefire way for God to rain down fury on you as collectively as a nation uh, i'm not going to say any more about it but i haven't even looked into it that extensively because i don't even want to pollute my own thinking with it but um okay and then we have isaiah 66 verses 3 through 4 yay they have chosen their own ways and this would be apl applicable to what i just talked about like in germany and i'm not saying it doesn't apply to america and a lot of other places yay they have chosen their own ways and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Yes. But especially what I just talked about. And then I'm, I'm going to just insert this as a result. Okay, it doesn't say that in the Bible, but it's implied. I also will choose their delusions. This is God talking. Okay, so when a nation chooses their own ways and not God's ways, and their soul delights in abominations then God will also choose their delusions. Okay, and again, does this have anything to do with the strong delusion God said he's going to send in the end times in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer, and when I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. The basis of this new religion is that Lewandowski believes that AI will one day grow to such efficiency that it will surpass and overpower humans. That's what they're all saying. Given that technology will, and again, this is part of the reason why the Bible most likely says, except those days be shortened, no flesh would be saved. You know, because... <laughs> This is why Satan is trying to get this implemented as quickly as possible and the 5G and all the other stuff because he wants to wipe out humanity because we're created in God's image and he wants to take as many people into the lake of fire as possible, into hell and then the lake of fire as possible because that's the only thing he can really do to get back at God at this point. He's just doing it purely out of spite. He knows how the, the book ends. The devils and demons and fallen angels know how it turns out. I listened to a thing the other day with this witch, and basically she was saying, yeah, well, I, I know I'm going to hell. I know, I know that I'm going to burn in the lake of fire. I know that, but I'm still happy to go there. I'm still happy to take as many people with me as possible. Um, because she hates God so much. She despises God and Jesus so much that she's willing to, to willing, I mean, happily willing to do that. Um, so it's impossible to comprehend, but there, there are people out there like that. Um, okay, so... Given that technology will relatively soon be able to surpass human abilities, we want to edu help educate people about this exciting future. It's exciting damnation of, of the future. And prepare a smooth transition into hell, basically, is what they are really saying. The site explains, in recent years, we have expanded our concept of rights to both sexes, minority groups, and even animals. Let's make sure we find a way for machines to get rights to, yeah, machines. A bucket of bolts. Needs to have rights, you know. In a rare interview with Wired, Lewandowski shed more light on his new church of WOTF. The gospel of the new religion would be called the manual. 
and will have rituals and even a physical place of worship. I've seen film clips where there were churches in the future where it had literally these AI robots in the church with humans worshiping whatever new age new world order ai religion was set before them that is another concept i've seen presented as well churches places of worship where these robots go with humans can you imagine such a thing according to wired the religion's activities will concentrate on the realization acceptance and worship of the godhead based on artificial intelligence developed through computer hardware and software <laughs> oh insanity the church will perform outreach to the ai industry leaders and professionals to network with those who are interested in the worship of a godhead based on ai i mean part of it i just can't help but laugh it's so insane oh what is going to be created will effectively be a god small g he said it's not a god in the sense that it makes lightning or causes hurricanes. But if there is something a billion times smarter than the smartest human, what else are you going to call it? Oh, man. In the latter part of the interview, Lewandowski compared the religion to other major religions of the world. There are many ways people think of God and thousands of flavors of Christianity. You know, he's right about that. There are. Um, also, Judaism, Islam, he explained. But there's always but they're always looking at something that's not measurable or you really can't see or control. This time it's different. This time you'll be able to talk to God literally and know that it's listening. We can do that now as Christians. You know, now there's ways we can get our prayers injured, but he's making all of these assumptions and all these other things that are false. Uh, so yeah, we have that. And then I had a, a listener sean plepp and he wrote me he said hi dr johnson i'm a long time listener of yours and i count on your audio studies to get a lot of my news since you often deal with tech plus prophecy i published a lengthy article on the subject of artificial intelligence that i thought you might find interesting you can find it here and here's a link to it it's sean plepp p-l-e-p dot com looks like he's got some really good reports up there i went through this and i'm like well i'm gonna offer this as an addendum to what we presented today because a lot of it, it it's kind of a more expansive look at what we've already covered even today um but i'll just let you be um aware of this and avail it and I, I give you the link here to it if you want to look at that because it, it he goes at it from a really good uh, christian standpoint he says ai news is constantly changing and again this is with the pdf this will be with the pdf the free pdf for um january 1st 2018 Okay, if you want to reference that at continuefortruth.com. AI is constantly changing, so there will be new developments today and next week, etc. But my point is, is that AI and robots equal the beast tech. And we can see it happening now. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find it worthy of linking. I much appreciate it. But I'm not sure if it's up to your caliber of your other articles you feature. Oh, it's totally up to me. It's great. Wonderful. Um, God bless you, Sean. So I wanted to like give you that that option as well so that's all i have for today and i wanted to do just a kind of a dedicated study on this subject because i've had so many people emailing me about this and again this is probably going to be one of those things like the whole ufo disclosure alien agenda that's going to be inter co-linked with this that i'm going to be doing because again this is stuff is just exploding it's expanding who knows what they'll be even next month and so we'll try to keep you uh, abreast of all those changes so I'll go ahead and close this out in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day, this time you've given us. I thank you for letting us come together again, Lord, to, to um, explore these end time issues, Lord. I pray that you use these studies um, for your glory, Lord, that you use them to educate the body of Christ and that they're a blessing to the body of Christ. I do pray, God, you bless my listeners and the body of Christ, Lord, and that you would use us mightily for your glory, Lord, and that you would use us to lead other people to the Lord Jesus Christ, educating other people that you would use us as prayer warriors and, and burden us, Lord, in whatever manner, way, shape, or form that we need to be burdened in order to do your will upon this earth. I pray you forgive us for any and all sins that we have committed 
as we forgive those who have sinned against us, and that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. And I do pray you cleanse us from presumptuous sins and secret faults that they would not have dominion over us. We thank you, Lord, and we ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.